Hi, and welcome back to Lifestone Management. We're on to Chapter 13, Part 2. Now, in Part 2, we're going to explore CAMs. Now, I'll remind you, I mentioned in Part 1 that CAMs are complementary and alternative medicines, and I'll be using CAMs more often through this video. Now, how effective are they? We're going to touch on a number of CAM examples and services and programs. I hope this chapter is going to be helpful for you. And remember that with the access to medical information and services online and the variety of different CAMs, regulated or not regulated, it's your and my critical thinking and questioning of claims that are going to be important to our health. I emphasize this as making good decisions to think thoroughly and completely and critically by not doing any of that could cause you health problems. So let's get started with CAMS. The medical research community uh, uses the term complementary and alternative medicines or CAM to apply to all healthcare approaches, practices, and treatments. Not widely taught in medical schools and not generally used in hospitals either. They include many healing philosophies, approaches, and therapies such as preventative techniques designed to delay or prevent serious health problems before they start. They take a holistic method that focuses on the whole person. Now that sounds very good, and in and of itself, it is. It's gen it, it generally is. However, we have to still use our critical thinking skills as fees for treatment vary from one health practice to another, from one province or territory to another. Canadians are expected to cover a large part of the cost for CAM services. These are not typically health, you know, covered under the OHIP or Ontario Health Insurance Plan. They may or may not be under your pension plan or your local health plan within the provider of your workplace if that's provided for you. So why do people use CAM therapies? What's the draw? What's in it for us to do so? Well, most people who use CAM say it fits their values and beliefs about life and health in general. They may also have concerns about the side effects from conventional medical treatment or other drug therapies, or they just may not have had a very good experience in mainstream medicine. Often, people that use CAMs often believe that body, mind, and spirit are involved in health. And most Canadians who try CAMs do so as complementary health practice. And when I say complementary, I'm suggesting people will be using hospital and doctor and nurses services in addition to using some CAMs. Now, there are medical practitioners that support this. And there are others that don't. So it puts a premium that you inform healthcare providers that you use of the CAMs you are also using. So let's look at this. Doctors and CAMs, do they mix? Integrative healthcare is gaining greater acceptance in the medical community. There are some medical schools that are teaching courses about CAMs. This has start, started to create a universality of what you should expect with certain practices in these um, camps. Many doctors are calling uh, upon their colleagues to not dismiss or fully embrace CAMs, but instead consider each approach thoroughly and evaluate it, uh, its potential benefit to patients. In other words, they are also to critically think. Therefore, 
the focus is on the patients, and that's where it should be. The World Health Organization, the WHO, is creating a web-based classification system for traditional and complementary medical um, health medicine to bridge this gap and divide, if you will, between the Western medicine and historical traditional medicines. And we'll see how that plays out. In Canada, the fundamental it's fundamental to the integrative care and it's necess and this necessity of establishing these links between the two types of healthcare options and enhancing communication between patients, doctors, complementary healthcare providers, and the government providers that oversee healthcare in Canada. I would certainly support uh, and agree that improving the communication between all parties will only make an overall better experience for patients in the long run. Okay, let's consider, are CAMs safe and effective? It's a good question, and I don't think there's going to be a real simple answer. Scientifically studying the safety and effectiveness of CAMs is relatively new. It is becoming more popular, so the scientific community wants to make sure that what we're seeing people pursue is, in fact, in the long run, good for people. In 2004, in CAM, it's a Canadian research symposium, was launched to support CAM research community. Its members link with organizations and educational institutes to develop formal CAM research partnerships and initiatives. So rather than excluding people who are involved in CAMs, they're embracing and including. Doing the appropriate research is uh, to either support CAM research and services or to alter them in some way to make them more appropriate for the public consumption. In Canada, Training standards have been set to govern organizations for special health practitioners. However, homeopathic physicians are not regulated in Canada, except in Ontario. Massage therapists are regulated in BC, Ontario, Newfoundland and Labrador, and New Brunswick, but not the rest of Canada. So when I say regulated, it would suggest in some cases that there would be an organization or a governing body for that group or for certification process, meaning a criteria in order to perform the task. However, there's no uniform regulation system for CAMs in Canada, which is, you know, that's just... That is just nothing that covers it all, and it probably shouldn't cover it all. There's so many different variations and in individual components with each individual patient. There are so many different varieties of services and practitioners that we're going to look at them in a minute. If you're choosing to seek or use a CAM, ask, is it safe? Is it effective? Is the practitioner qualified? Good question. What has been experienced by us or experienced by other people and what are the costs? I mean, there's a lot of things we should be exploring before exercising our options to utilize a CAM. For example, the natural health products are things that have taken a, up a bigger part of the health care generally, both in terms of the consumer as well as in terms of patients in response to growing concerns about the regulatory um, environment for natural health care products. The term natural health products is a term used to describe a variety of products such as herbal medicines, homeopathic remedies, um, nutritional supplements, health, um, sorry, Health Canada developed a regulatory framework that came into effect January 1st, 2004, the result of which was all natural health products sold in Canada now require pre-market assessment and 
authorization for safety and effectiveness. Now there are many products that you can buy readily in the US. However, if you try to buy them in Canada, you may not be able to because if they haven't been assessed and authorized for safety, they won't be available in Canada. We will now explore a variety of CAM programs and services, and we'll begin with the Indigenous Healing. It's an example of one CAM. Indigenous Healing is a way of integrating health services available through our Canadian health system and using unique uh, Indigenous perspective that incorporates the four aspects of healthcare, and they are um, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, and physical health. Healing circles, sweat lodges, traditional medicines, and the use of medicine wheels and healing ceremonies are just some of the approaches that are being used in the additional indigenous health services. Acupuncture. Some of you may have had acupuncture before. You know it's an ancient Chinese form of, of um, medicine. Acupuncture is based on the philosophy that a cycle of energy circulating through our body controls health. And you've probably seen the acupuncture needles. They're very thin needles that are inserted in particular spots that are specific to um, uh, flow. And it helps increase flow of this energy or stop blockages. As related services, as a related service to acupuncture is acupressure. And here the therapist uses their fingers and their thumbs to stimulate certain points to relieve pain or relax muscles. And perhaps you've done this before with your own shoulders if you felt some stress or and you've used your fingers and or your thumb to press down on muscles to relax the tension. That's essentially acupressure, but certainly um, the therapist does acupressure with more precision. Reflexology is also falls under this particular genre of CAMS, and it's based on the theory that massaging certain points of the foot or our hands can relieve stress in corresponding parts of our body. Ayurveda is a traditional form of medicine treatment in India. It's a basic premise, its basic premise, sorry, is that illness stems from incorrect mental attitudes, diet, and posture. So exercise, meditation, herbal um, medications, and proper nutrition to support mental health is part of the treatment there. Now, as mentioned in a previous video, biofeedback. Uh, biofeedback uses a machine that measures temperature, skin response, and brain waves, and then relays this information back to us through a visual um, through this machine, the biofeedback can look like can also look at brain waves in people and learn how to control many involuntary functions such as the circulation to our hands and to our feet, tension in our jar, heartbeat rates. It's very impressive. Chiropractic. Again, this is something that maybe some of you are more familiar with because it seems to be more mainstream. Chiropractic is a treatment method based on the theory that many human diseases are caused by misalignment of bones. Research in the last 10 years has demonstrated its efficiency for acute lower back pain. Research has also been conducted on other potential benefits, including headaches, arthritis, but findings are inconclusive to date, but it will continue and we may find more treatment options like chiropractic that will have some good connection for better health. The next one we'll look at is herbs, botanical medicines, and dietary supplements. Now these supplements, all of these are becoming a very, very popular CAM in North America. Natural health care products are used to treat both internal and external conditions. They can be taken by mouth or applied to the body. There 
they are sold in many different forms. You can get them as a raw form, herbs, teas, salves, creams, uh, liquid extracts, tablets, capsules, a variety of different methods. Natural healthcare products are not necessarily safe. Just because they are for, from a, a, a natural source, we need to be, again, thoughtful consumers when engaging in alternative medicines or CAM. Homeotherapy or homeopathy, um, it's based on three fundamental principles. Like cures like, which essentially is treatment must always be individualized and holistic. Less is more. It's the idea of increasing uh, dilution of these, um, it, which it can increase efficiency of the material. And doses of animal and vegetable material substances are administered as serially diluted solutions. Therefore, there's not an active ingredient, um, say a drink, but it's enough to make a difference from a homeopathic perspective. Kinesiology is described as a study of human body in motion. Kinesiologists will provide exercise therapy, injury assessment and workplace design, health and fitness courses and workshops, and they will also gait analyze, which is very important in using a biomedical technologies. Now, what are we looking for? Are we physically moving around correctly? The, the kinesiologist will be able to look at how we move, is it efficient, and do we have an appropriate range of motion? Massage therapy, perhaps you've had a massage, but have you had a massage from a professional? They, massage therapy is a general term for a number of techniques that involve manipulation of muscle and connective tissue. It's used to relieve muscle tension and stress, improve flexibility, and enhance the person's sense of well-being. Naturopathy. This is looking at naturopathic medicine and its comprehensive holistic health system that incorporates therapies from traditional Chinese medicines. This system also emphasizes natural remedies such as sun, water, heat, and air treatment for disease. Naturopathic medicines are regulated in some provinces and in others they're still working towards regulation. Now if you've had an injury and are recovering from an injury you may have used a physiotherapist. Physiotherapists are educated and trained to assess, restore, and maintain physical function. They can assess strength and endurance of muscles and assess the impact of injuries on physical disability or on physical function. They provide a treatment uh, with modalities such as ultrasound, um, um, uh, planning and exercise, rehabilitation, um, dry needling even. Well, these are just a small representation of CAMs, and I think, if nothing else, what it reminds us about our healthcare system is it's full. It has many examples of things that can help us, but it puts a premium on us being aware of what we have and what we have to be doing, and that's a critical thinking responsibility. Don't accept claims carte blanche. Ask questions. Do your research. If you're not satisfied with the answers, in spite of how good you want it to be, turn it away. If you're not satisfied, it's not good for you. All right. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next video, everybody. Bye now.